Uh, there's one other aspect, of course, of, that, of this frenzied activity, you might say, in, 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 in private equity is that if you have a $20 billion fund and you're getting a 2% fee on it or $400 million a year, which seems like chump change to those that are managing them, but sounds like real money in Omaha, if you're getting $400 million a year from that $20 billion fund, you can't start another fund with, any, with a straight face until you get that money pretty well invested. It's very hard to go back to your investors and say, well, I've got $18 billion uninvested and I'd like you to start give me money for another fund. So there's a great compulsion to invest very quickly because it's the way to get another fund and another, like, another bunch of fees coming in. And uh, those are not competitors for businesses that Charlie and I are going to be particularly effective in, in, in competing with. I mean, they, they, uh, we are going to own anything we buy forever. Uh, the math has to make sense to us. We're not given to optimistic assumptions and we don't get paid based on activity. Yeah, of course, a lot of the profits are not in the manufacturing sector or the retailing sector either. A lot of them are in this financial sector. And so we've had a huge flow of, of profit to, to banks and investment banks and investment management groups of all kinds, including various kinds of private equity. And uh, that has... I think no precedent. I don't think it's ever been as extreme as it is now. Do you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. But in the end, there's no form that produces investment results. Hedge funds don't produce investment results. Private equity doesn't produce investment results. Mutual funds don't produce it. That if it was simply a matter of form, we'd all call ourselves, you know, whatever that form happened to be. What really makes the difference is whether the person that's running it knows what their limitations are, knows where their strengths are, plays when they have the opportunity to play advantageously, and stays out when they don't see any opportunities. Charlie? Yeah, I'd go further. I'd say averaged out. I would expect that the return per dollar per year in managed futures funds would be somewhere between lousy and negative. The incentives are awesome. Yeah, and, and the, the one thing, I mean, it's, it's, it's always interesting to, to both of us how you get certain things that are fashionable and people think that by naming something, a given name, that's, that somehow that makes everybody smarter or able to make money in it. I mean, there is no magic to private equity funds, international investing, hedge funds, all of the baloney that gets promoted in Wall Street. But what happens is that certain things become very promotable usually because there's been recent successes by other people and that the new entrants extrapolate the successes of a few people in the past to promote new money from, uh, from people currently. So they adopt titles that, you know, that uh, they think will attract money. And they, uh, but it doesn't make anybody any smarter if they hang out a shingle in front of their house that says hedge fund or they hang out a shingle that says asset allocation firm or something of the sort. It, 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 the, the form doesn't... <clears throat> create talent. It sounds to me as if some private group bought it and now they're, they're reselling it. And we, we get approached on that sort of thing all the time where, where uh, a financial group has bought the business and, the, and then wants to resell it uh, fairly quickly. And they, they almost invariably, well, they invariably, I would say, auction them the business. They seek what they call a strategic buyer. A strategic buyer is some guy that pays too much because, you know, and, and he wants to justify it, so he says it's strategic. I mean, I, I have never understood being a strategic buyer. Every time somebody calls me up and says, you know, we think maybe you're the logical strategic buyer for that, you know, I hang up faster than Charlie would. The, uh, but the idea that we're going to find a business to buy from some guy from the, who, from the moment he bought it a few years ago, has been thinking, how do I get out of this thing? You know, what do I do to make it earn, have those figures for a couple of years look a certain way so that I can get the maximum amount in a couple of years? You know, that we're just not going to make any attractive buys there. We won't trust the figures. You know, we, it just, it's, it, what we like is a business that, where the guy 
before was running with the idea of running it 100 years and t taking care of the business in every way possible and was not contemplating sale, but for one reason or another, uh, finally needs to monetize the company. We won't, we will not get any, we will not get any sensible buys really from the resellers. I, some of the, it's amazing to me what's going on. Some of these things, literally, you know, fund A is selling to fund B, to fund C. I mean, I've seen some that change hands three or four times. They're just marking them up and everybody's getting two and, they're getting 20% of the profits as they mark it up. And probably fund C or fund D, it may be owned by the same pension funds that own fund A, except that everybody's just taking a big, a big 20% uh, uh, slice out of it every time they, they uh, move it from one place to another. We're not buyers of anything the financial buyers have been in and re you know, currently owned. Charlie? In the uh, 1930s, there was a stretch when certain kinds of real estate, when with certain kinds of real estate, you could borrow more against the real estate than you could sell it for. And I think that's happened in some of these private equity deals. And uh, it's weird. It's weird. This is not our field. I would say the general field of buying whole companies, it's gotten very competitive. There's a huge industry of doing these leveraged buyouts. That's what I still call them. The people who do them think that's a kind of a bad marker, so they say they do private equity. You know, it's like even a janitor call himself the chief of engineering or something. And, but at any rate, the people who do the leverage buyouts, they can finance practically anything in about a week or so through shadow banking, and they can pay very high prices and get very good terms and so on. So it's very, very hard to buy businesses. And we've done well because there's a certain small group of people that don't want to sell to private equity. And they love the business so much they, they don't want to just dressed up for resale.